Hello everyone, Big Dots is here and welcome to another video. In this video we will be watching The Other Side plus 20, I did it earlier as a Beast Mastery Hunter. We're not doing a live commentary because I uh, recorded this last night and I was tired so I didn't really feel like talking about it during playing. So we're gonna uh, talk about it uh, while watching it now. But first off, I want to thank you guys all for your massive support. My goal of 450 subs at the end of the year, which was 150 higher than I actually could have uh, thought I would manage, uh, I got thanks to you guys. So thank you so much for the for the support. And by the time of releasing this video, um, we all have had Christmas, I think, or had some of the holidays. So yeah, I hope you guys uh, had a good time, enjoyed it, and yeah, let's let's dive right in. So this is a pug run, of course. I usually only play with pugs. I don't have a, like a set group to play M plus with, um, and and this was one of the pug runs. Uh, so far, so good. It's a pretty easy week. Enraging and volcanic. Volcanic is of course an FX that really doesn't bother us at all. And well, uh, enraging. There is a little thing that we can do on this one. There I almost misclicked and killed myself, which was not great. Um, but what we can do is of course remove the enrage at the end of the... Uh, when the mob hits 30%, we can use our tranquilizing shots to remove it. So that's something that we should do. Also something that you can do and be mindful of, if you take a binding shot, which I think you should take in, in M+, um, if, if you take that, then use it more at the end of the pool than at the start of the pool, because when at the end of the pool all the mobs enrage, the tank will have a hard time. Although it's boss week and not mob week, it's still the tank will have a hard time. So that is something that you can can do. We play with as a night fae here, and the legendary that we are running is the fragment of the elder antlers. This was a bit of a, a difficult choice or difficult what is difficult but it was a bit of a hard choice choosing Rylax or um, Elders because the other side has a lot of big pools like this pool for example although I don't have well I currently have it up but I'm not using it at the end of this pool uh, this pool has a lot of like huge pools especially in the um, in the area with all the yeah the area with the a lot of mobs I don't know actually how that area is called but still, um, those pools, you are hitting more than four targets. So Elders is not really used at that point. So you're currently actually running without the Legendary. So that one is not so good. On the other hand, the boss fights in this dungeon are pretty hard. Or at least I think they're hard. And so there I want the extra damage. So yeah, as you can, as you can understand, that's... A bit of a difficult choice on that one. I chose to go for uh, Elders uh, on this one. Uh, I think it could have been uh, better with Rylax, but I'm not sure. Here, uh, as you can see, I'm using the Urn. I usually never use the Urn, because I'm not playing that much Night Fae, and I'm not used to using the Urn. Besides that, I thought that the Mage uh, in our group was Night Fae, or at least I'm, I'm sure he's Night Fae, because he already, um, as you can see uh, at his screen, behind the Mage he is he used the Pot Tender, so he actually is Night Fae, but he is not using his, uh, he's not using the Urn. And I thought we had him in the group for the Night Fae role, but it's probably uh, wrong on my side. It's fine, I'm, I'm using the Urn now. But guys, if you like this content and you want to see more of it, then leave a like and or subscribe to the channel. Uh, going into next year, I'm going to try and increase my uh, knowledge of both Marksman and even Survival Ship Hunter. Survival Ship? Survival Hunter? Like, that's how good I know the class, I don't even know how it's called. But uh, Survival Hunter. And I want to make content of that as well. Uh, but first off, I'm going to make content about marksmanship because that is actually a class that I know fairly well now, playing it off off camera uh, for quite some time now, uh, learning it so I don't show all that stupid shit. 
Um, and although I make mistakes, and I especially also as Beastmaster Hunter, I still make mistakes, I think I know it fairly well to at least give you guys some knowledge about it. Uh, let's see, now we're gonna go to the next area here. I think I, I'm standing safe. I do not stand, I am not safe. I then use my heal, but then I can't blink anymore. So I just tur <coughs> turtle my way through this. Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah. And now we find out that our tank does not have any soul binds. Uh, at the end of the dungeon, he actually tells that he is running uh, a Pelagos uh, build without like any soul binds clicked. Or, uh, yeah, something like that. So, for example, this pool, because that was the area I was talking about, uh, the Ardenweald area, I think it's called. That's it. Like, here, our legendary doesn't do anything. Because it's more than four mobs, and I'm not gonna wait and use my legendary at the end of this pool for only four mobs. So here, and and the both pools before this one, are fairly useless actually uh, for the legendary. Because yeah, it, by the time like enough mobs die that there are only four left, so you can actually do the double hit. That at that time, the mobs are either so low ha HP or are Wild Spirit is gone by then, so, yeah. I don't think this dungeon is really suited for Elders, uh, but yeah. Here we have to wait for the tank a bit. And we keep on going. Uh, this tank and I think the healer and rogue are pre-made. I'm not really sure. I think those are pre-made, um, but the rest, well, the mage and I are, are jo did join later, and um, yeah. So it's it's partially a a group run, but for me it's all pugs. On this one, just stack up on the fair, and when he charges you, you just move out, of course. So here, this is the wave of terror, uh, stand close to someone, and then I get focused, and by now you guys know, but in the in mid-charge, make sure that mid-charge you are using your feign death. Don't use your feign death uh, when he targets you, but he has not charged you yet. Because if you do that, then he will swap to a different target, which is probably gonna be a melee people who are not expecting it so they all die or at, uh, like three men get hit it's really sad this one I've never seen someone do this pull this is like the first time I'm doing this pull like these little frightened cries if that cost go through like the matriarch will be summoned and we don't want that so our tank what he does is he pulls those two aside to prevent uh, and to stun it so the matriarch won't be be pulled and then we can just like pull the rest of this area without being uh, without having to worry about the blade beak matriarch and here we just nicely burst this pack down I do love the night fake covenant as beast mastery hunter it's it's quite amazing as a marksmanship, I'm playing currently Kyrian, which is also very nice. Um, but yeah, we're at the end of the pool. My binding shot is down. The tank decided not to really move and like, uh, what do you say? How do you say that? Uh, stun them or root them, I think. But yeah, that's that's fine. That's his choice. Um, and we managed to clear this entire area. There was no route shared at the start of the dungeon, so I don't know where the tank is going. I struggle with like following him because I don't really know what he's doing. And here he didn't really tag all the mobs. And as you can see down there that my pet is actually dead now. Uh, and I am responsible for the urn, so I just turtle and, and urn in this one. And as you can see, like everyone's popping right now, and I s first have to resummon my pet before I can actually pop on this on this pack. So I'm quite sad because a lot of damage is lost here on my end because, well, my pet was dead because the tank didn't have aggro or 
it's more fair to say I didn't use misdirect on the tank before the pull and then I just started wailing on the adds already before the tank had gathered them all up so I could have done something different there but yeah the pack is dead and we continue onward so there I thought that we were going left but we were not um, something I haven't really mentioned I am running with uh, Dagger of Necrotic Wounding. I chose that one, of course, because it is boss week, so we're in boss fights for a longer period of time. That is very important to to yeah do a, lo a lot of single target if possible, and that's why I'm using Dagger of Necrotic Wounding because it's it's amazing damage, so you should always go for that. Something I could have done differently here: uh, the tank was going to kite. But he was like more or less out of my wild spirits when I threw down binding shot. I could have like when I saw him start kiting, I could have instantly used binding shot. And that way make sure that his the mobs would still be standing in my wild spirits uh, while they were rooted so I could deal more damage. But yeah. Those are the little things that, that I can improve and while re-watching this gameplay with you and, and talking about it I'm also learning on that front so yeah here we go into the next boss or the first boss of the of the dungeon and we're going in without any CDs our B2 Red is off uh, on cooldown and both are uh, aspect of the wild and wild spirits so yeah it's a bit of an awkward start because yeah, we're lusting now, so now you want to have all your damaging abilities, I used them on the previous pool, otherwise I would be holding on to them for, for way too long. So yeah, this is fight, it's fairly easy, just make sure that you do the mechanics right, and and yeah, you know, jump, jump in there. And I have this slow fall thing, which I forgot, and I it's something that I should maybe remove, I don't know, it's like... How it is built into the talent tree of um, of Night Fae. But I think that slow fall thing is pretty annoying. Now I finally have all my cooldowns. And what I could have done, as you can see, like the field of flowers, which gives me 15% haste, is on to the left side of the trap. As you can see, guys can see. And I move to the right side. I should have just moved to the left side and, and keep standing in my field of flowers because here I'm moving back in it and it gives me 15% haste and I, I should have been standing in it for longer because it just increased my overall DPS. So yeah, besides that it's just rinse and repeat, just try and make sure that um, you keep your barb shots up and yeah if you have the bomb on you stand in the trap so you fly up you can and I don't know if you guys do this I, I, I sure I'm sure you guys do mid-air you can actually just keep on attacking there uh, for a second you saw that my IQD was off cooldown I used it because I thought that well I was uh, able to to get like a crit buff or a haste buff or whatever buff but it disappeared which means that I either gave someone health or I gave someone mana or I reduced something or removed the stack or something I don't know exactly how it works but yeah uh, the bomb don't use the bomb like if you have the bomb on you don't instantly jump just, just yeah jump uh, at the last possible second so yeah and now we continue onward I'm actually in my mount I thought you were oh that's weird usually you become like a, a green spirit thing now I'm flying as a mount which is pretty cool because I'm still in my mount here as well oh. oh well nice So onwards to the next pack and we already did of course quite a bit of trash which is nice and we have 28 minutes left so we're 
really good on timer. The DPS is also quite high. I'm really lagging behind the other two. But still. Here everyone is ready, but well, Paladins, eh? You can't really do anything about them. They're just slow. And I think this guy was doing something else as well. And here he wants to run the other way. Reminds that he's going the wrong way. And well, there we go. I decided to use uh, all my cooldowns on this on this one because I was holding on to them for quite some time already, and it's it's a waste to to not use it. Very important here. When he enrages at 30% and he is mid rage, you want to use your tranquilizing shot to remove the rage because it it hurts, as you could see there. So. Uh, either the rogue or me, we both can remove the enrage effect, so that is something that we should uh, pay attention to. Uh, we killed that mob pretty quickly because the rogue bursted and I bursted as well on that mob. So one of us could, if we liked, had communication, one of us actually could have maybe hold his cooldowns for this pack. Um, and here we did communicate, because the rogue was going to remove the undying rage from the blue marker and I was removing it from the other one. That way I put down a binding shot so the tank can actually just easily kite backwards and the mobs are nicely rooted. Try and keep your barb shot spread out as much as you can guys, but you know this. By now, I'm still gonna re repeat it though. And here I'm gonna remove the Undying Rage again. And now I don't have anything to remove the Enrage effect. Uh, but yeah, that's that's fine. The tank, uh, I have to say he's holding his own pretty well. Or the healer is holding him up. I don't know, I don't see the healing. But it's going very smoothly so far. If you guys are still watching this by now, consider leaving a like and consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot and I keep on posting about every Monday and if you like my content then well subscribe so you can see every Monday uh, some new new content again here my wild spirits is used on a single mob so on this in theory on this one it's actually quite good because now we have the double proc from our elders um, our elder antlers and here I move back into melee range because around this <coughs> spot I had my wild um, field of blossom, sorry. So I was moving back in it for the increased 15% haste. So yeah. And I'm holding on to my bestial wrath here because I assume we instantly go into the next pool, but what I should have known is this mob, the defunct dental drill, is actually not a great mob to like solo kill. So we move around it. You don't have to use any pots here. You can just easily move around it. Now here, it gets a bit hectic. And I kind of lose track of what I'm doing, where I'm standing, who I'm targeting. And I'm not spreading out my barb shots properly, I think. I'm not really doing that much. <coughs> Sorry about that. That much damage here. I'm just, you know, trying my best here, I guess. And now these little volatile uh, mobs come in as well, so I have to watch out for that. I don't want to stand in the big blue circle to get stunned as well. Uh, it's a bit hectic. I think I removed that in rage. I'm not even sure. I might not even do it. But yeah. It's a bit of an it's a bit of an awkward pull here, but we managed to we managed to clear it, so it's fine. And this is why I think um, the tank, the healer, both I I knew before that they were pre-made, and I think the rogue as well, because the rogue didn't say anything, and suddenly uh, the tank says wait for the rogue. So I assume they are on comms in in some way or form. Because the rogue is, is doing uh, some stuff. I dismissed my path here. Because I noticed that while we are using shroud sometimes. Or uh, when we're using stealth. My, mo my 
pets sometimes just screw over the stealth part and just start randomly getting attacked by mobs so that's pretty pretty annoying um, this this point this is perfect this only this pool I think in this entire dungeon is perfect for our elders because it's four mobs it's legitimately four mobs so we are dub doubling damage on like yeah the perfect amount and yeah as you can see we we really burst it down quite easily uh, doing uh, at the top I think it's for about 30k or something 28 so it was really nice that was a nice pull for us and we keep on going on to the next boss this boss there's nothing really all that special about it I think it's a pretty difficult boss but if you know the mechanics it's, it's fairly easy um, let's see we should try and always interrupt the frost bolts I sometimes forget that or not well not forget but not really do that properly if you stand in this beam you will gain ticking damage which is of course not really nice but on the other hand it also boosts your damage um, but there I have to move because of the, the line which stuns us and does quite a bit of damage. But if the line gets then into the boss, he will um, deal ticking damage as well. So yeah, that's, that's not so good. But we stand and block those as much as we can. Here I turtle and I try to block both of them. It's not really working out that well. But yeah. It's important at, the, at this pool to not kill male house if you if you are not able to instantly kill Maleficent as well, because in her like sort of next phase where she uh, throws all those bombs, if you can't stun her with the male house bomb, then well, you really are simply screwed because it will kill your group so it's very important that you are able to uh, kill them uh, in the same like instant so we didn't kill him so now we uh, we don't kill her as well now we get a mill house and if we are going to kill him now then we should also kill Maleficent in the like next run in the next phase when she gets here uh, so while we're doing this guys if you have any feedback for me uh, on my content and if you think well I can do something better or you have um, yeah some tips and tricks for me please let me know I really want to increase or yeah make my channel grow uh, make it better and I can use all the feedback of you guys um, so yeah please please do now we killed Millhouse, so it's very important and I will and, and remember thinking about this yesterday it's important that she dies now and then what I do which is not so smart is I suddenly start focusing the bombs although it's that it's more of a like a healers job I should actually be focusing on on damaging her more um, so to get her through this phase but we're all fine we killed it um, the rogue does a lot of single target damage as well which is really good and we go forward and there we want to skip this and it's a bit like what are we gonna do what are we gonna do are we letting the shaman die everyone is hiding now no one actually tagged the boss yet except for the shaman I think so we're like what are we doing what are we doing and I'm I'm holding I'm holding and then I see the consecration get dropped down by the paladin and I decided well okay we're doing this and I just yeah unloaded on this guy to to kill it what I forgot because we're doing like a different way this guy is not that strong right so I used everything here to to burst him I used all my cooldowns 
But we're gonna do like this, the giant guy, the, the red guy. We're gonna do him next, I think. And I forgot that. So I better could have used my CDs there on the Enraged Spirit than on this guy. Because this guy really died fairly quickly and it wasn't necessary for me to use Wild Spirits and all that. So yeah, that is something I should have done. Here, if you are Night Fame, you see the big blue circle and I don't need, uh, I don't mean the healing rain. Make sure that the Enraged Spirit's in it before you click the urn. And something else that you should pay attention to, what you could do, is don't stand on the urn um, at the time or of like when he, he, he gets pulled. Because he does this enraged mask, right? You see all those masks spawning around? They will spawn on the player. So if you stand on the urn, and then you, um, and then he does enraged mask, then all those masks will spawn on the urn, making it difficult for you to click it because you will die to do the to the damage they deal. So yeah, that's that's not a great idea. So yeah, it's something that that that, that you can do. Uh, well, here we should have stunned one of those uh, like weird mobs, so they didn't turn. Because now they're doing this blood nova, blood nova thing, which is not really nice. Uh, I should have maybe removed uh, it with enrage, but it's all fine. We're moving out of this, and now we have like a nice little four stack again, and we can do our damage on this one. It's important that you kick the healing wave. The high priest also does a heal. That heal is not so important. That heal is not that strong. And if you don't have a cast a kick for it, fine. Kick the healing wave. That one is important. The other one, not so much. And we keep on fighting this nice and easy what you can do like when these these dead walkers die they like give that spirit as you could see you can use your tranquilizing shot on it and then it will disappear and that's quite nice because the tranquil uh the spirit walks there for like 14 seconds or so and if you have a group especially in, in the lower well is it called elo in this as well L I don't know. The lower elo, let's just call it for that. For now, um, people don't know and they get smacked by one of those mobs and they will die. So what you can do as a BM hunter is just use your tranquilizing shot on one at least to remove it and it's out of the fight and people don't have to worry about it. Here the tank nicely grabs them all in and we will use the urn to stun them. There we go. And now we keep on DPSing this. And we are focusing the Hexer because we want to make sure that we can kick the healing wave when it comes up. Um, for some reason I usually also kick the Hex cast. But there we have it nicely. What I should be doing now because I see yeah, there is some kiting going. I could have maybe used binding shot like a fraction earlier there we do it tranquilizing shot mob is gone because the tank is still in melee and if your party consists of like two other melee uh, and maybe even a holy paladin who's also in melee then then you really want to remove those guys so you click it trank shot and it's gone now for hakar hakar is a boss that is quite difficult the longer the fight goes on and, and on a plus 20 for me at least it, it, this fight takes quite some time but there are some things that you can do to make this fight go a lot smoother as a as a beast mastery hunter first off what you can see i do hunter's mark on him why is that it reduces the overall damage i take from him by 7.5 percent this is important because he does a cast called blood barrier we all know it by now 
and the blood barrier. Um, there it go goes. The blood barrier, the barrier gets stronger the more damage um, it deals. So, and it deals damage to both the mobs that are there and to the entire party. So what what you do is you try and and like kill the sons of Hakkar nicely. And why? Because he can't damage them. And if he can't damage them, then he his shield is not getting bigger. And here I turtle because he's also doing damage to the party. And so if I turtle, I don't get any damage, so the shield is not getting any bigger. So what I try to space out is on the first blood barrier, I will do Hunter's Mark, which continues on throughout the entire fight. And what I do as well is I use Feign Death, because I have a conduit on that as well to reduce the overall damage I get uh, there. So first blood barrier, Hunter's Mark, and Feign Death to reduce some of the damage. On the second one, you can either do, if you are PM Hunter, and you, or if you are uh, running with the I think it's called a tenacity pad, like the the pad that gives like a shield. No, not a shield. A damage reduction aspect of. No, I don't know what's the damage reduction called. Sorry guys, I'm messing this up. But the, like the 20% DR that you get from a certain pad type, uh, use that one or use turtle and use then the other one uh, on like the next blood barrier. And now I didn't have anything and we had quite a lot of mobs up. So yeah, as you can see, the blood barrier is taking quite some time to, to punch through, which is quite annoying. And I don't want to use my cooldowns here. I'm holding on to them. Because I really need them on the next fight. And I don't really know the time between now and when we get to the platform, how much time it takes. So I think if I knew this a little better, then I knew if I could have used my cooldowns there. Because I do not know for sure, uh, I'm holding on to them. And the reason that we are holding on to our cooldowns is because we really need to kill the, um, yeah, the, our platform, that guy, um, was all on our, our little platform. We really need to kill them in, in one go because, well, otherwise you will be dragging out the fight for, for very long. Um, but yeah. So in chat someone said where we had to go. And as you can see in the, in the top right corner, uh, we are off count by just a little. But yeah, we have 10 minutes left, so it, it is fine. Here I only use Bestial Wrath. I'm not using anything else. So yeah. And I'm also not gonna use my Bestial Wrath on uh, when it's off cooldown now. Because I'm, I'm really scared that I'm not able to, to clear my platform in time. And there is a reason for this, because the pet AI really bugs out for me a lot of the time when I'm I'm doing um, when I'm doing this fight I really have I, I really struggle with the with the pet AI there the tank di uh, the healer dies but we're fine I'm gonna go stand on the side that where I was supposed to go and I dismiss my pets and why do I do that because when I get to the platform I usually have to resummon them but for some reason now they are instantly back but now my pets can, can fight this guy, like instantly. I have times where my pets either come from Moisela from the platform, like halfway through, making me deal so much less damage, because I can't use kill command. My Sometimes my barb shot doesn't even work. It's, it's just frustrating throughout. I do really hate being a BM on this fight. I really, I really hate it. Uh, but yeah, it, it is, it, yeah, we can't really do anything about this. Now what we find out is that we did not actually kill um, all of them, sadly, so we have to keep going. 
our tank calls out which platform it is and as you can see over the left shoulder of Moisale you will see a statue still standing there so that m means and it's in the f like far back <coughs> so this means that we need to go front left if we want to to get there so yeah that's something that you can always do when you uh, when someone screws up you just look around and you look where there's one statue still up and then if it's like on the far side of Moezala then you know it's like the front side if it's uh, very close then you know it's on the either left or right side on the on the outside of it here it's just make sure that you execute well that you m keep on on doing the rotation properly don't get hit by these because it will kill you and now we will um, move to the proper one and we know that we need the front left one the mage took the wrong one I think yeah and as you can see my pets are want to go to the to the other side here I did not bother removing them for the simple reason that I assumed that everyone was going to this platform um, but that was actually kind of a mistake because if for some reason people fucked up and I was the only one here I could have had a problem with my pets and it could have given me a problem on this platform not being able to kill it now our tank, tank does like his big brain strat that he actually is dragging the last two mobs that we need for the 100% count over to Moizala such a big brain it is fine until it's not because for some reason this fight takes quite some time still I thought that we would have burned through him by now but we did not so we still need to do the mechanics but we have two more mobs and they are wailing on the tank as well and here I position myself wrong and so I just turtle myself through there and there the well yeah there the tank gets smacked and dies I instantly binding shot because I want the mobs to stop walking towards us because I don't want them to like start smacking on whoever has aggro at that point so yeah it's very important uh, for me to to hold them back and here we just finish them off and that is the run guys um, I I hope you liked it um, and if you have feedback for me leave it in the comments if you have questions I love to answer them I think it's amazing when you guys ask questions and, and we can talk about it uh, I think it's very fun I hope I see you guys in the next one and uh, a best New Year's Eve and we'll see each other soon goodbye <laughs>